All right, Jimmy, you got your tank set up, you got fish in it, you got coral in it. Now it's time to start automating your tank, make it do things for you, which makes keeping your tank more enjoyable and easy, and it makes it easier for you to go out of town, which by the way, you're going out of town with me very soon. So, timely information. Probably in the not too distant future, nearly everything on your tank is gonna be automated, but most people start slow. Either they can't afford all the automation at first, or they're a little afraid of the techie side, so they take it piece by piece. So we're gonna start you slow, but there's three must-have automations that I wanna see on your tank. One of them being the auto top-off system. Now, Jimmy, there's two big things about auto top-off systems, two golden rules. Do you know the first one? Um, golden rules with auto top-off? Ah, fill it with RODI water, not salt water. Boom! The man nails it. First question, he's at batting 100%. You're right. And a lot of people make this mistake. We get this question a lot at home office. When you have a salt water tank and water evaporates, the salt doesn't evaporate, only the fresh water side does. So when you're topping off your tank, you have to refill it with RODI water. So good job on that one. It's a very important piece that a lot of people miss. And What's the second golden rule when it comes to automatically topping off your saltwater tank? What do you never want to do? Let it run dry. Mm, you don't want to, but you know, that's manageable. But there's a big mistake that a lot of people make when it comes to setting up an auto top off system that they say, hey, it hasn't happened to me yet. I'm not worried about it, but it can ruin your house and it can ruin your tank. You know what it is? Not shutting off, just feel overflowing. It is plumbing your RODI unit directly into your tank. A lot of people do this with a little float valve. Horrible idea. You do not want to do this because your RODI unit is stupid. It only knows to run and make water as long as there's no back pressure on that valve. And that float valve at some point will fail. And when it fails, your RODI unit keeps making water. Your saltwater tank becomes freshwater tank. Your sump and your tank overflows and then you get lots of water in your house. Case in point, this happened to a client of mine before I was involved. He had his RODI in it, plumbed directly into his top off, into his tank. That float valve failed. He went out of town for five days. He came back to 25,000 gallons of water in his basement. Now, how does he know it was 25,000 gallons worth of water? Because he got the water bill. Oh man. Never, ever, 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 ever put your RODI unit and plumb the output directly into your tank or your sump. Horrible idea, even if you set up fail safes, just don't do it. We don't wanna create that much risk. Now in your case, you have a mixing station with RODI unit is plumbed into that vat, so we don't have any danger of overflowing your tank. I've been doing a lot of talking. Tell me how that auto top off system has been working for you. Oh, it works great, except for one thing I noticed, because it's not a huge volume, I, I don't know what it is, maybe three gallons, um, I keep my house at 72 degrees. Um, this is kind of open in the top. I find I have quite a bit of evaporation. So I'm putting that three gallons in there. I would say once a week, it's easy enough to do. I could get a bucket, but I don't even bother doing that. I just disconnect it and I roll it down the hall, roll it in here. And then I use my uh, Cichet Zero pump and I drop it down in there and I put it into the reservoir, plug it in, fill it up roll it back easy peasy now for those of you that are watching that don't have an auto top off system built in you got two choices here you can do a standalone system it's a self-contained unit that has float switches or electronic eyes or all different types out there and there's also ones that rely on a controller such as the neptune systems uh, auto top off unit that is standalone but it's more powerful if you tie it into your controller that's what i have on my tank jimmy that's where we're going to get you down the line what I really like about that is I can log into my Apex and I can see if my tank is topping off. I can manually turn it on, turn it off if I want. It's really useful, but you don't have to go that far at first. For now, what you have is working. So Jimmy, the second thing that you gotta have on your tank, super easy automation, but you have to automate this, is heater control because those heaters can fail. And a lot of times when they fail, they fail on and overheat your tank. I believe you just had that experience yourself on your freshwater system. Uh, I saw that I had a dead fish in my 
freshwater aquarium. And when I went up there to scoop them out, I lifted up the top and I could feel the heat coming out of it. And I'm like, what? And I scooped down in there. And as I went to scoop with the net, I put my hand by the glass and the glass was hot. I didn't take the temperature in there, but my heater had failed and it overheated so badly. And then the next morning I woke up, I had four more fish die. So um, not everybody died, thankfully. But um, yeah, that was horrible. Um, you did hook me up with a solution and I just installed this guy. I got uh, a, this ink bird. It was super simple. So I just uh, opened up the box. It's just two little outlets that you plug, you know, your two heaters in. I've got two heaters in different areas of my sump. It has temperature probes. So you put the temperature probe down in the sump. I was just in the middle of setting up the app, which is another cool thing, which will also alert you if it gets outside of the range that you set for the temperature since it has temperature probes. So yeah, if it overheats, it just shuts the power off um, to that heater. So if the heater's broken, it's just not going to have power anymore. It can't keep heating. So that's a very cool thing. And it also alerts you if it drops below temperature. And so um, I have it on my home Wi-Fi. It has my email address. It also audible alarms because I already was setting it up. I don't know if you need this whole book. I mean, it, it was it was that simple. We got your auto top off handle. We got your heater control. Now the last one that I think is absolute you got to do on your tank is automating your lights. <clears throat> There's a couple different ways to do this. One, you can use those old school timers. Remember Jimmy, the dial and you like pulled out the little knob and it like tripped the thing. Yeah, like for my Christmas tree. Those were a lot of fun to set up. And like any legit aquarium light, it's gonna have a built-in timer on it where you can set the time when the light comes on and the time when the light goes off. But the biggest question we get around the lights are, how long do I need to have them on? There's two main things you wanna remember. One, you really want the photo period to work around your lifestyle. For example, I have a client who gets up at six, he would like to see his tank before he walks out the door at seven. Have those lights come on. They don't have to come on 100%, but at least you know get them ramping up enough so you can see what's going on in the tank. Like 12 to 14 hours I'm okay with because the other piece of that is intensity. We're not going on at six and 100% and then off at nine o'clock or seven o'clock and turn them off. That was back in the old T5 and halide days when we couldn't adjust the intensity. It was either on or it was off. So if you wanted to have a 14 hour photo period, say from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m., that's fine. We're gonna to wanna to ramp up the intensity slowly, even keep it at a lower intensity and then ramp it back down. So we're basically building a tabletop if you wanna have a longer photo period is how that's gonna work. Yeah, it's, it's funny we're talking about automating the lights in my freshwater tank. I had uh, like fluorescent tube lights uh, over it for years, but there's no timer on it. It's on or off. So I get up in the morning and I just walk over to it and I turn it on. It's like, goom, the lights come on. And then at night it's, goom, they're off. Boom, and all the fish go, ding. I feel kind of bad now that we're talking about it and I care so much about these, but for over 20 years, I just turn them on and off on those guys. They're all still alive, but they probably hate me. I never really thought much about uh, sunrise and sunset in my freshwater tank. But yeah, these lights that I have here, it's super cool because it's all right in the app and I can just adjust how long my sunrise, my sunset, and then my daylight is and they ramp. So we've got three things that we're automating that I have on your tank, Jimmy, that for me, are a must for any newbie. And that's why you got them on your tank. So you're leading by example, the ATO, the heater control, and your light control. We'll have more down the line, but I wanna get you started on the important stuff. And I think you're still enjoying your tank. Oh, dude, it's awesome. I absolutely, I mean, I, I'm in here all the time. I, it's funny because I, I spent probably, I don't know, maybe an hour or two today cleaning. It's just so enjoyable. I mean, just looking at, at every, all the life in there, it's so different than just a cichlid tank like what I've had. There's so much more diversity and I can't wait to have even more. I love the excitement. Look, even cleaning a tank, even scraping the glass. I don't, I don't think that's a chore. Like it's making you stop and interact with your tank. Who doesn't enjoy that?